it's our understanding here at TalkSport and it's now being confirmed Everton have been given a 10 point penalty after the independent commission hearing on alleged breaches of uh, Premier League profit and sustainability rules. The punishment applies immediately. It points to a situation where we are going to see very, very strong penalties against teams that are in breach of uh, rules of this nature. I thought that there might be an element of the Premier League bottling it because the next cab off the rank is going to be Man City. And once you've set a precedent of points, then you've got that in your armoury and you're going to use it again. Listen, the Premier League are against us, the referees against us, That's managers always say that, but the Premier League are going to be against us. The siege mentality in that Everton dressing room is going to be absolutely rock solid. For me, one of the great things that will come out of this, and Everton fans don't, you know, take this personally, but this thing is a good thing for football. The negligence come from ridiculous transfer policy yeah. that has got them into trouble. I don't think there is an Everton fan that will be surprised by what's happened. If there's an opportunity to kick Everton, then that's exactly what happens. And historically, the club have never stood up for itself. Wow. Lots of strong reaction to Everton's points deduction, and we're going to get some more reaction from an Everton fan in just a moment. Everton boss Sean Dyche has expressed his shock at what he called a disproportionate 10-point penalty imposed on the club. They're in the process of appealing the sanction given to them by an independent commission for breaching the Premier League's financial rules. The punishment has dropped them into the relegation zone, but Dyche says he and his players are ready to take on the latest challenge put in front of them. I think like everyone, well certainly everyone in these parts was was shocked. Um, and seemingly the, the wave of noise after that seemed like most people in football, around football, are shocked. Um, the enormity of it, disproportionate, is a word that's been used by the club. And, you know, so obviously we're going to feel a bit aggrieved by that. Um, on the other hand, it, it just it doesn't change the focus. The focus since I got here has been sorting things out on the pitch, getting the team to win, getting the team to feel different, the performances to be different. Um, and we were obviously on the right lines for that um, and delivering strong performances, I felt. And then this has just given us a push backwards to then come forwards again. You know, that's the, the job hasn't changed for me. Um, it's just made it more difficult in the current circumstances until the appeal, of course. Sean Dyche speaking there ahead of their clash with Manchester United this weekend. I'm delighted to say on the line uh, to talk more about this is Tommy Robertson from the Toffee Blues podcast. Tommy, welcome to the show, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. How are you? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad at all. I'm interested to get your thoughts on this. What, a week later? Um, it's been about a week since, of course, the, um, the the sanction against Everton was announced, the punishment that they face for uh, breaching the Premier League's financial rules. How are you feeling about it a week down the line? Uh, still quite shocked. I wasn't surprised that there was going to be a punishment. We all knew we were guilty for, for several years, really. Uh, I'm a lot more glad uh, that it was this season uh, compared to last season but still shocked at how severe the penalty is we'll have to see uh, how the how the appeal goes but definitely looking with it with a keen interest to see how the league deals with with other uh, breaches of profitability and sustainability and how they deal with with other clubs because I, I still can't quite wrap my head around the fact that we've been given a more severe penalty for uh, what a 19 and a half million pound overspend than than you get for a club going into administration it is crazy when you put it like that. It does feel harsh. It, you know, I've read into this quite a bit. And when you look at sort of the deal that Everton had in place with USM for the stadium in particular, that's the bit where I've got lots and lots of sympathy for the club. I think, you know, they did break the rules in terms of what they spent in comparison to what they were allowed to. So I understand that there had to be some kind of repercussions for that. But like you say, it just feels so disproportionate, doesn't it? Everybody's going into the weekend, looking ahead to that game at Goodison Park and expecting to see a real big atmosphere at, at, at you know at the home of Everton, expecting Manchester United to struggle as a result of that. Are you expecting that or are people making too big of a deal of that for you? I, I don't think we're going to struggle too far. I'm still feeling quite confident going forward. Uh, I'd, I'd probably be slightly worried if I was Manchester United now for this weekend because I'm not sure I've ever seen the fan base so united, but... As I said, I'm I'm happy that this happened this season and not last season when we were in a lot trickier position. But we're we're looking really strong this season already. I think we've we've definitely been on an, an upwards trajectory. But 
I still, as I've said before, I still can't quite wrap my head around the, the severity of the punishment. I think Dyche spoke really well today uh, about how himself and the players are going to deal with it going forwards. I I feel I feel okay about the rest of the season now. It's it it is what it is. If it turns out that the appeal is rejected and, and the points don't get deducted, then that's just something that that will that we'll have to take on going forwards on the pitch. I'd like to see the club stand up for themselves off the pitch. Uh, the fans are definitely going to stand up for themselves, but I'm still feeling confident for the rest of the season, even though it is just a ridiculous punishment. So you're optimistic that despite the ten point deduction, Everton will still have enough. Uh, to stay up and that that's because of as you mentioned the teams uh, around you right you've seen enough from Sean Dyche's men to feel like they can do what's required yeah we've actually we've been on a really good run of form I mean taking out the the Luton game at home of course that was ridiculously disappointing other than that I mean the past six or seven games I, I think we've been brilliant we've picked up some really important away wins which isn't something that we've been particularly used to over the past few seasons and Look, it's it's a ten point deduction. It still doesn't quite put us last. Still only a couple of points to to get out of the relegation zone. And the 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 point deduction isn't going to change our form on the pitch. As I said today, the, the focus hasn't changed. Uh, the players are still know their jobs. We still know what we need to do for the rest of the season. And it, it is it it's a setback definitely. But I'm still confident for the rest of the year. You mentioned a little bit earlier on that you're interested to see how other teams' situations. Uh, will be dealt with Manchester City being the one that everybody's got their eyes on uh, at this moment in time. Um, I'm going to play you this clip from Pep Guardiola and then I want to get your reaction to it because he says that you can't compare uh, their situation with Everton's. It's not the case because this is the judge and the court and the Premier League uh, lawyers and our lawyers to at the end make the our defence, both defence in front of the judge and after he go decide this. I didn't change one second my opinion about take time, wait and see what they're going to decide and after we'll accept the resolution. So all of you are journalists and of course I'm not going to say one word about Everton because I don't know the reality or really, really happen. You are journalists, maybe you know, but that is for sure because I asked to the team that is two completely, completely different cases, but completely. I know when the people like saying, okay, what city and city, why don't go to the conference? Wait, you know, wait. And after what is going to happen is going to happen. He's right to say that they're different situations. One club has been charged with one breach. One has been charged with 115 breaches. One club complied with the Premier League and went along with the investigation. And the other club has refused, according to reports, uh, to go along with the Premier League's investigation. So he's right to say they're different. But what do you make of that? No, I, I do get what he's saying, that they are different. They are they are breaches for, for different things. But as he said, it's, it's one charge versus 115. Uh, we know the Premier League are a light touch when it comes to the the so called Big Six. We saw how they they punished them for uh, trying to break away into the into the Super League. What well, they they didn't want to punish the fans back then, but seemingly it, it's a matter of punishing which fans. It's not just punishing any fans. I, I'd like to see City heavily punished. It it is a different kind of breach. Don't get me wrong, but every every Everton fan will will be looking at that with with great interest. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure there's any football club on the planet who quite have City's army army of lawyers behind them. Uh, look, they are they are different breaches. It is it is a, a different case to argue. Uh, I do understand what he's saying, but if they are not severely punished, if they are found guilty, of course they are just charges. But if they're not heavily heavily punished, then unfortunately, I won't be surprised. We know how the Premier League uh, like to like to deal with their their darling six, uh, but we we will have to see. Um, what, what kind of punishment they are given. So just a couple of questions for you then on that. So their case is, it's alleged that what they've done is is sort of misled people with regards to their revenue as a football club. That feels more severe to me than overspending, getting your sums wrong essentially. And a lot of that being down to the fact that you, you lost out on a deal because of government sanctions that had nothing to do with your football club. So... Surely you think that the Manchester City situation, albeit different, is more severe. I would, I would definitely say it's more severe. I mean, our overspend was what nineteen and a half million. A lot of that had to do with with stadium costs as well. It wasn't necessarily uh, on the pitch activities. It, what they are faced with is uh, extremely severe. But as I said, I'm, I won't be surprised if 
if they're kind of dealt with lightly. I won't be surprised if they manage to get, get away with it entirely, to be honest. But what the Premier League have done here, they, they've set a precedent for, for punishing clubs, but they've not exactly put it into any form of law. It seems like the, the punishment policy that they've used here isn't a, a league-wide situation. It's clearly just something that they've come up with for our case specifically. I'd imagine to set an example for, for the rest of the league not to do what we've done, but th- their breaches are far more severe, albeit different breaches for different reasons. I'd like to see them heavily punished, but as I said, I, I wouldn't be entirely shocked at all if, if they get away with it. Following on from that then, what would you say if Manchester City are found guilty would be a proportionate punishment, knowing what we know now about the Everton case and how far the Premier League have gone in terms of punishing the Toffees? I think that's that's so hard to say, really. If, it's, if we're working on, on a matter of, of 10 points per, per charge, then, then what's that one 1,150 points we're never going to see something like that um, it is so important to stress that they are it, it is a different kind of case I'd like to see a heavy punishment for them it's nonsense suggesting that they're going to have their title stripped off them that's obviously never going to happen in, in any world but to be honest I, I never really saw the case that we'd end up being punished for, for with a 10 point deduction so you never really know what the Premier League could come up with they seem to kind of be making it up as, as they go along to try and deter other clubs from doing the same but I, I can't really say what, what kind of punishment I, I want to see for them <laughs> Fair enough I want to see them relegated to be honest with you if they are found guilty, I want to see them relegated. And uh, you know, you got to be, you got to give them a chance to defend themselves. You got to allow the process to run its course. I, I accept that, but I think a real precedent has been set now, and the Premier League will look very, very silly if they don't apply the same severe punishment um, or a punishment that is proportionate to the the crime. Essentially, if it's found that that's what they've done. Um, You've got Manchester United coming up at the weekend. I know a lot of the talk has been around this story with Everton, but going into the game, how are you feeling? Confident? What do you expect from uh, from the Blues? Yeah, I was quite confident, kind of regardless of the points deduction. I was I was relatively looking forward to the game. I don't think Manchester United have been tremendous this season. They've definitely been underperforming. Whereas, as I said, we're, we're in a really good run of form. I think the atmosphere at Goodison is going to be absolutely tremendous. I've got absolutely no doubt of that. There's There's plenty going on behind the scenes that, that the fan groups have organised and, and the way the fans have come together has been been absolutely fantastic to see. But aside from all the points deduction, I, I was already pretty confident for the game. I, I was already expecting a decent result and now I'm I'm fairly confident that we that we can win this weekend. How much of that comes from confidence based on what you've seen from Everton and how much of that comes from the fact that Manchester United, despite somehow statistically being the informed team in the Premier League, that they just don't look at it this season, do they? They just don't look the, like the same side that finished third last time around? I've got to say, more of it comes from the way that we've been performing. We've we've proven, well, not necessarily proven, it's still still early days in this season, but we look like a different side. We don't look like the soft touch that we used to be. Uh, I mean, take the Palace game, for example, 1-0 up, back to 1-1, 2-1 up, back to 2-2, and then we still managed to win. That's definitely not the kind of performance we would have seen uh, for the past couple of seasons f- from this Everton side. And the players, the personnel haven't massively changed. It's still relatively the same squad. But I think our mentality has changed massively going into this year. And that's why I'm still confident going forward. So that you can kind of, you can take a glance at how other teams are performing. But I mean, the United case this season is is quite a confusing one. As you said, they, they are on paper, the informed team in the league. But I think if you watch them generally, you, you can see that's not necessarily the case feels like they're already under under quite a lot of pressure. But I take it more from the fact that I've been really impressed uh, with the way that we've played over the past couple of months now, really. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Sunday. Dominic Calvert-Lewin's back in the mix. Um, he's been off it for a number of reasons, really, for the last couple of seasons. But do you think he's back now? And how much of a difference has that made to Everton? I'd, I'd certainly like to think uh, that he's back now after the injury problems he's had. And Dyche has... Is, is treating him really well. We've seen over the past couple of years that he has been picking up these injuries and he's been rushed back because at the end of the day, we needed him. Uh, we were massively short on goals. Well, we were pretty short in every department for the past couple of years, but goals was absolutely one of them. And when Benitez was manager, he he rushed him back way, way too quickly. That then aggravated injuries and he's been picking up different injuries as well. And Daesh gave him the time at the end of last season, despite the fact that at one point, it did look like we were we were definitely going down, and we could have done with his goals. Dice kind of he had the foresight to to give him the chance to to fully recover, and that's kind of paid dividends early on in this season. I think he's been really good. Uh, it's really good to see him back, you know, it, with full fitness. Because even when he came back 
over the past couple of seasons for a couple of matches at a time. He wasn't able to gain momentum. You could see that the the, in, the the amount of time that he'd spent out was was definitely affecting him, but he looks like a completely new player. He obviously picked up that really unfortunate injury uh, against Villa when he came back, but he's already brushed that off straight away. And yeah, I, I, I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy with the way that, that Daesh has dealt with, with his injury situation because he's been massively, massively mismanaged by the last couple of managers and Daesh has given him the chance to to take all the time that he needs so he can he can come back properly.